outside of you is a fountain of the living water. We are trying to see how can we manage with our own ability. But God is calling us to relax and know that it is a spiritual thing. It is Him that has come to take residence in us. It is Him that has chosen us to become the rivers of living water. You contain so much you will never be able to exhaust. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. What a wonderful time we have again to share the word of God. I am so glad, so excited that we are here to fellowship again as usual. And thank you for finding time and for tuning in. This is the Marvelous Believer Show and uh, I am Lucy Lepore. I am forever so grateful uh, for this platform that the Lord has given us to be able to fellowship and to share the word of God. And even now as we go to read the word of God, I just want to encourage you to share this link with a friend and I know God is teaching us something, God is encouraging us and we are always very blessed. So share the link with someone, encourage a loved one to keep watching us. We have quite a number of shows that have uh, passed in the previous days and they are such a blessing, they are such an empowerment for the body of Christ. So uh, tonight I have an interesting thought that I want to share with us and I'll, I'll read, I'll go straight to the word. I'll read a, a scripture that is in the book of Mark chapter 16. Uh, this is quite interesting to me and I believe it will be to you as well. I know God is uh, speaking to us something quite interesting. So Mark chapter 16 verse 17 a very popular verse uh, but uh, let's read it let's read it uh, mark 16 verse 17 glory be to jesus hallelujah hallelujah wow so father we thank you for your word we thank you because your word is spirit and it is life and we know every time that we share your word uh, it speaks life to us, it encourages us, it can never leave us the same. We give you praise for everyone that is watching us and many that will watch us even after this. Because your word is fresh, it will always speak life. In Jesus' name. Okay, so verse 17 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. This was Jesus giving the great commission. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. I, I just wanted the small part that says they will speak in new tongues. That's where I am interested with. And this just caught my attention that the Bible talks about speaking in other tongues and speaking in new tongues. It's interchange. It's the same thing. And I thought about the newness of the tongues. And it was blowing my mind. You know, I was thinking about how new these tongues are. And I, I realized that uh, I believe very many of us who are watching us today and um, many of us who are born again, we, are, we speak in tongues. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you, have you realized the Bible calls them new tongues? Because every time you speak, you do not repeat the same. Every time you speak, it's new. Even right now, if I want to speak in tongues, and as I finish uh, one sentence, I speak again, I'll be speaking something new. That is how new the tongues are. That is how new it is. So everybody who speaks in tongues speaks a new thing. We utter new words in the Spirit. They are forever new. And I thought about how rich the Holy Spirit is, how rich in utterances, how much how many words, how much utterances the Holy Spirit has, that everybody, every new creation believer, every uh, believer is able to speak new, a new, uh, to utter new words continuously, forever, everybody, the whole world, and he has never run short of giving us those utterances. You never need to memorize, you never need to repeat, you never need to learn. Every time you open your mouth to speak in tongues, new words begin to flow. New words, you begin, the utterances, he is so rich. I was thinking about uh, a country like Kenya, because we have so many languages. We are considered very rich in culture, by the way, and we are. 
Uh, we have, I think, 43 languages. That is already so admirable. But those are languages. What we called a phone from the beginning is a phone. What we called maybe a stool is a stool. It has never changed. We already admire the, the various languages and think about the Holy Spirit that he, has give, he gives us new words, new utterances continuously for everyone. Nobody has ever ran short. That is the extravagance of God. That is the riches. That is how he cannot be exhausted. That is how we all have enough, enough for everyone and never run a short. Glory be to Jesus. And that, that was already so exciting for me. So and then I think about this Holy Spirit who is so rich in utterance. And then I come to the book of John chapter 7 and verse 37. And Jesus is speaking to some crowd somewhere and he is telling them, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then John goes ahead and tells us, Jesus is actually speaking about the Holy Spirit uh, because Jesus uh, had not yet been glorified. So when he is talking about the living uh, rivers of living water, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. And he is saying, he's not coming from the air, he's coming out of us. He is depositing as rich as I'm talking about the Holy Spirit being. With all the riches I'm talking about, the continuous supply of utterances, continuous supply of grace, it is not coming from anywhere. Out of you, the marvelous believer, you contain, you are the, he has decided to deposit that riches inside of you. And out of you flows rivers. Actually, the Bible puts it in Prulo. It's not a river, it's rivers. It's plenty. It's too much. You contain so much you will never be able to exhaust. It cannot be exhausted. You can share the love of Christ with everyone. You can share the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can do everything. You can, it can never run dry. It is an abundance. It's an extravagance. Sometimes God is just doing things to show us how extravagant he can be. Out of your belly, it is inside of you, flows the rivers of living water. Glory be to Jesus. That is inside of you. That is how he has deposited that extravagance inside of us. And I want to read um, what I would call our main text for the day from John chapter 4. And we look at this, this deposit that is in us, this rivers, this extravagance, this continuous source that cannot run dry. Let's look at a story. It's a story of Jesus talking with a Samaritan woman and I ever had someone saying this was the longest conversation Jesus ever had with anyone, even with his disciples, because this was a very long talk. If you read John chapter 4, he talked with this woman for so long. Uh, today as I was walking to the studio, as I was coming, I was thinking, why, why did it take so much time? Why, why is it recorded as the longest conversation? And I thought many things, that's not what I'm about to speak about, but I thought, is it because Jesus wanted to show us that he reaches out to everyone? Because this woman shows us that she was maybe not a very straightforward person, and Jesus spent so much time with her. But I also thought Jesus must have been f uh, clarifying something else. And, and as I'm going to share, I think he was also dealing with something about some religious practices. He must have been, had decided, let me take some time and help someone. And tonight, I believe we are also going to be helped somewhere. So John chapter 4, from verse 1, uh, the Samaritan woman meets her Messiah. I'll, I'll read from maybe from verse 10, because the beginning is just an introduction of how Jesus had come up to that place. Verse 7, maybe. He says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask me, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no, no dealings with Samaritans. Now Jesus, Jesus, if you read verse, um, let me, let me go to verse uh, so that I bring it into context. Verse 13, after some conversation, Jesus answers her and says, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him 
a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So it's the same thing that Jesus goes ahead and talks about in chapter 7, that whoever drinks this water shall not thirst again because it is a fountain, it is rivers, it is continuous, it cannot dry. Once you drink it, you will never need water again. So this is what Jesus had come to give to this woman. But because she did not know, he first approached her. I think he was looking for a way to approach her and he starts with, give me some water. And the first thing she did is she discovers this man is a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. So I was looking at this story and I realized so many times we have, we have become very can when the things when the the bible says things of the spirit are designed in the spirit the carnal mind cannot design them there are things that have come to us there are times when the holy spirit speaks to us and we want to interpret them in our carnal mind we want to look at ourselves first so many times god has been speaking to you and i'm talking to you the marvelous believer and the first thing that you do is consider who you are the holy spirit is not considering who you are he is not talking about you. He is not talking about who you are and who you are not. But the first thing that this woman did was, me, I am a Samaritan, you, you are a Jew. We, you cannot speak. You are not even allowed to speak to me. And that many times has been our problem. The marvelous belief. God has deposited so much inside of us. And instead of us exercising that, instead of us walking into that, instead of us laying hold of that, the first thing we have thought about is we have self-condemnation. I am not good enough. My history, my background, what I know, what people know, this is what this woman was. What she knew, what people knew, she knew she's not even, maybe the, the Jews could talk to other people, but for her, she felt it cannot be. So the standards of holiness look so unattainable that you don't consider yourself worthy to be the fountain, worthy to be the source of the living water. But God has, has come so that, God, the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. Maybe some of you think there is this thing that I've been fighting, there is this thorn in my flesh that I've been dealing with. I came to, to tell you, the marvelous believer, that you, it is you I'm talking about. Inside of you is a fountain of the living water. You are the salt of the world. You go out there and you reach out. You go out there and you make life different for people. You carry life. You carry the spirit of life. Glory be to Jesus. The, those things that you are thinking about, I am not good enough. There is this reason why I cannot be the one. Let me tell you, we have stories in the Bible. People have been there. Paul has been there. Maybe David has been there. But God has overlooked. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, I think around verse 24, 25, God overlooked those things so that he can uh, show, demonstrate righteousness. It is you that he has chosen to be the vessel. You are the vessel the world has been waiting for. And when you look at the story of this woman, let me just go to ahead to verse 13. Uh, verse 10, he said, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Listen to this woman. You have nothing to draw. She, she, okay, maybe now she's convinced she can talk with him. But she has found another problem. She has still found another reason why it cannot work. Let me tell you, Jesus wants to give her living water. Jesus wants to make her the vessel. Jesus wants to make her the source. Jesus has come to give her everlasting water and that is what i'm talking about tonight that jesus is calling you and one after the other we have reasons we have excuses actually good reasons i would say but god is speaking to us and he is saying i have overlooked those things i have called you to be a marvelous being. i have called you to to show my extravagance you are the model to show how extravagant i can be the holy spirit God himself, the extravagant God, the one who does not run short, has taken his residence in you. You don't have to think about how deep the well is. So many times we have thought about that. It is not about your ability. 
It is God calling you. It is God who has chosen you. So when we think about how deep the well is and there is nothing to draw water with, we are becoming religious. We are doing it our way. We are trying to see how can we manage with our own ability. But God is calling us to relax and know that it is a spiritual thing. It is him that has come to take residence in us. It is him that has chosen us to become the rivers of living water. So go, don't fear to, like she was wondering, the well is deep. There is nothing to do with. I know as I'm speaking, there are people that God has been calling into something. God has been calling into a new thing. God has been speaking to you. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. But you have a fear, maybe a fear of tomorrow. Maybe a fear of the unseen. You fear to leap in, uh, in another level. You fear maybe what, is it what people will say? Can, I, can people think, can people believe me? Can people consider me? God is speaking to us. Let us be spiritual. Let us be people that look at things in the spirit. This woman, her problem was now she is thinking, even if I were to give you water, there is, you don't have something. Even if I were to believe that you can give me water, you do not have something to draw water. And also the well is deep. So you see she is going into the carnal side. She is looking at things through the eyes, through what she knows, through what they have always practiced. But let me tell you, the things of the spirit are held or received by the spirit. Tonight I want to encourage us, leap into that unseen. Go forward, don't worry, don't fear how you'll do it. It is not you. Praise be to Jesus. And God and Jesus continues. This conversation was actually quite long. He continues, he says, The woman said, Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Then Jesus answered and said, If you knew, uh, no, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a fountain of water springing uh, into everlasting life. Now, let me just go into verse 21. When we read verse 19, when she is talking about, um, about uh, the woman said to Jesus in verse 19, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. That's why I said, I think Jesus took his time because he needed to deal with something about religion. Because this place, by the way, was, uh, had a, a very strong religious uh, stronghold. This is where, if you read from uh, history, this is where Abraham himself had built an altar. This is where Jacob now had put his altar and he had worshipped in this place and he had dug the well and that is where they were drinking from. So religiously, this was the right place. This was such a religious place. But Jesus is trying to remove that religiosity from this woman so that she can understand he is speaking about the spirit. He is not talking about just the physical water. He, he is trying to tell them, yes, you have been uh, uh, worshipping here, but a time is coming when I need you to worship more than just here. It's more than the physical water. It's not more than coming to draw water every time. I am able to make you the source. I am able to change you from drawing water into becoming the source of living water. Glory be to Jesus. Let me tell you, it is time that we came out of our religion. Sometimes it is just what we have always done that has been uh, covering our eyes or blinding our spiritual eyes because there are things we have done this way forever. When we, when, you, when we do things in religion, we resist change. And some of the things of the spirit, they demand change. So there are some things we have done in a certain way for the longest time. And Jesus comes and he's telling her, I know you have always done. Actually, he tells her, you people worship what you don't know because worship belonged to the Jews. But a time is coming. He tells her, a time has come and now is. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I came to speak to us, the marvelous believers. I started by saying this Holy Spirit I'm talking about is an extravagant God. He, is, he can never run dry. 
He can never go short. There is never a deficit. If you're looking for wisdom, he has enough. If you're looking for love, for grace, for utterances, he is extravagant. I came to speak to you and say that Holy Spirit has found a dwelling in you. He has made you worthy to be his, his dwelling place. He has considered you worthy. He has decided this is a comfortable environment for me. And we are talking about extravagance. There is no way you can carry that kind of extravagance and you live in lack. There is no way you can carry that kind of extravagance and you live in want and in poverty. I came to this to, to, to stir someone up, to say we carry this. We want to move out of the carnal level. We want to move out of the arguments of this woman. We want to move out of the level where we are trying it our way. We want to move out of the level where we are doing it the way we have always done it. I know they had always worshipped there. I know she was looking at the well and thinking it's too deep. I cannot go there. But the Lord is calling us. I know the Lord is calling someone. And he is saying, go get out of your comfort zone. Get out of what you have always done. It is about a new thing. And this woman tells Jesus, I know you are a prophet. I perceive, let me tell you, she, had, she, she could perceive. I perceive you are a prophet. And you are the Messiah. And when the Messiah comes, she is not able now, whatever she perceives, she's not able to bring it to reality. Reality is here with her. And she's not able to get it, to lay hold of it. I came to challenge us that reality is here with us. The, the extravagance of God is here with us. The life of the Spirit is here with us. You don't need tomorrow to prepare. Some of us are saying, I know God is calling me. I'm preparing to go into this. Uh, the reality is now. Praise be to Jesus. The reality is here. God is calling us. The reality is the present. But the present needs us to leave our comfort zone. The present needs us to leave what we have always done. The way to receive this reality is to know that it is present with us. Glory be to Jesus. And so let's, let's think about it for a minute. That the extravagant God, that the God who cannot run short, that the God who, can, who is able to give us even utterances continuously without uh, running short lives in us. We have become the source of the rivers of living water. I came to let us pray together because we cannot lack. We cannot be the source of living water. We cannot be the source of plenty. We cannot be the model of the extravagance of God and we live in lack. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray together because we have been brought to the kingdom of more than enough. The kingdom of plenty. The kingdom of possibilities. It has to work for us. It is working for us. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray together. Maya Rima Kasayanda. As we pray, I want to encourage you who has always had the Spirit of God speaking to you. There is somewhere, there is another level that God has been calling you. There is something new he has been calling you to. There is something extra he has been calling you to. I want to encourage you to leap by faith. I want to know that the tomorrow you are thinking about is the present today. And you can walk into it because the one who has called you, is here with you, has chosen to live in you, has deposited its plenty in you. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you because of your word. We thank you because you have chosen to live in us. The spirit of God, the plenty, the extravagance of God has been deposited in us as the marvelous believers. And so in the name of Jesus, we declare that we cannot lack. We have been brought to the kingdom of extravagance, the kingdom of plenty, the kingdom of possibility. We have come into the kingdom that cannot lack. We thank you because you have given us your spirit in extras. You have given us your spirit, even love, even grace, and it can never run short. It it can never run dry. We have become the carriers of this life in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everyone who has listened to us. I thank you because God, you have spoken to us. We move by faith knowing that you have deposited so much in us. We cannot fail. We move to new projects. We need move to new levels. We move to new directions of ministry. We move to new directions of the uh, operations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Knowing that all this has already been deposited for us. 
rivers of living water flow from us and reach out to many in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. And you have, maybe you have uh, listened to me and you have not yet given your life to Jesus. He is calling you to this life. He is calling you to this life of uh, extravagance. He is calling you to this life where he has equipped you to live a victorious life. Just say, Jesus, thank you because you died for me. The Bible says you just need to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you shall be saved. So if you believe that Jesus died for you, you just need to confess and say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. Come and live in me. Remove the nature of sin and give me your righteousness. If you say that prayer, you are born again. You are a new creature creation you cannot be defeated the devil has no power over you you live a victorious life as a marvelous believer thank you for staying with us uh, this has been the marvelous believers show where we speak who we are and what christ has done for us this is wema tv keep watching us and god bless you